Hey, good afternoon, folks. It's Steve, cal 5 juf Hope everyone's having a good weekend out there so far. So today, i uh, kind of been taking a break here for a little while, getting getting some other stuff done. Uh, so, But I, in, in the meantime, I had been working on a project. Uh, I had ordered a uh, Diamond CP610, which is a 10-meter slash 6-meter antenna. And I wanted to kind of take you through the whole evolution of actually putting it together and doing some testing on it. So we're going to go over the uh, reason why I purchased it, some of the performance specifications, documentation, unboxing, and test results. So this is what I currently have. I've got a 11 meter and 10 meter antenna serial, and then I have an Arrow GP52 for 6 meter, and then I've got a GP3 here for the uh, for the uh, VHF and UHF. My plan is to put this antenna up to cover both 6 and 10 meter and then put a 2 meter Yagi, but that doesn't exactly work out in the end, but this was this was the initial plan. The Diamond CP610 and 610 antenna has uh, three adjustable SWR windows. Uh, one of them is uh, what they use a term called insertion point. And basically what you do is you insert, uh, it's pole number three into pole number four, and then you uh, secure it with a hose clamp that they provide in the kit. And depending on the range you want, if you want the SWR range to be in this area here, you would insert this uh, seven meters, which is what I did. Here's the three adjustable ranges. So the antenna overall, uh, as you can see, the further the insertion, the more higher the frequency is. So you can kind of see the curve there, how that all kind of follows. So what I chose was 7 meter. That would give me a good broad uh, response on 10 meter and a pretty good response down in the single sideband range of 6 meter. So this is what I chose here. And seven, uh, seven centimeters is roughly 2.7 to 5, 6 inches. And this is, of course, the frequency response here. What you see here is this is the projected SWR that you would get if you had, for example, 10 meter. Ideally, the SWR you would have is typically about 1.35 at 28400 and 1 1.6 at 29600, which are the two uh, talking frequencies, one's for upper sideband and the other one's for FM, and of course on the 6 meter, ideally 50.125. This here again shows that insertion that we did. It shows you how we used a caliper to calculate the distance in inches. There's a second adjustment that you'll make on the one of the radials, which is a 10 meter radial. This radial adjustment is set for 690 millimeters, which is 27 inches. And you can see there, this is the adjustment right here. This is the rod that protrudes out. One thing it does mention is there's a water hole that you're supposed to have for, for draining purposes. There's the water hole right there. These are the instructions. The instructions on the website are not very readable, but the instructions that come with the antenna are fully readable. I just scanned these in here just to kind of give you an idea what they look like. It's three pages. This is what it looks like out of the box. Pretty nicely packaged. And they had it, every single bit of hardware was there. There was nothing missing. This drawing here shows you the assembly of the lower region. It shows you the upper. And here are some of the parts. Uh, we have got the, uh, the support pipe, which uh, attaches to your mast, the feed point assembly. There's one of the radials. This is the radial ring, they call it. And uh, this is where you attach the uh, ground radials. Wasn't a big fan of this design, but I'll tell you why I hear in the, in the next couple of slides. There's one Phillips screw that's supposed to hold the radio in, radio ring they call it. And I got that as tight as I could. And even after tightening all of the radials in, they didn't really press up too tight against the pole. So it looks like the only thing that was securing it was this Phillips screw. 
So I hope, and I will check back. I suspect that will eventually work loose and I will have my radio spinning around, but hopefully that's not the case for, you know, about a $300 antenna. Hopefully that will not be the weak link of, uh, of the install. This shows the insertion of the, uh, the fee point assembly. All, all good quality stainless steel hardware. This is the portion that goes to the mast. And there's another picture here. This shows the different radials. This is the phase coil. This is actually a portion of the Edteta. It's located in the center portion. Um, it's all good quality hardware, tapping screws and tooth washers, all of it, all good quality. Instructions are very easy to follow, so it's not a big deal. So the test results on 28400 perfect perfect better than av better than anything 29600 perfect very very good 100 watts this one here was 50 this was 100 watts but this is in average mode so typically if you're reading average power on this particular meter here the CN901 if power average power will give you SWR but it's also about 50% less than what peak power is. So that's that's about 100 watts. Very good SWR. 100 watts FM. Very good SWR. But this is where things didn't really go so well. Um, 6 meter, I could not get it to work on 6 meter. It just didn't want to tune. Uh, just, it just, it just, it, I'm not, I just can't use it on six meters, so it was kind of a disappointment. And I'm, I, I may figure out why I'll call DX Engineering see maybe there's some technical adjustments or something. But it, I just had really, really bad results on six meter. So initially, I had the six, uh, the new antenna with the GP52, which is over here. You see, it's a big antenna. It's big. It's 22 foot and uh, it's about six pounds. It's pretty heavy, but uh, so what I ended up doing uh, is I still have a lot of guys on 11 meter I like to talk to. So I ended up taking the six meter down and putting up the 11 meter serial and tuning it in for 11 meters. So now I got pretty good CB coverage too, but uh, I may change that around. I don't know what this picture is going to look like, but this was kind of a compromise. And again, there it is, this GP3, the CP610, and the serial. So uh, SWR was very, very, uh, SWR performance on 10 meter was great. Unable to get SWR on 6 meter or any other the other other bands mentioned in the review, which means you're probably going to need to buy an antenna tuner, which is something I don't have, and I probably need to get that. Use on 11 meter, this antenna will not work on 11 meter. It will not work. SWRs were horrible. So um, anyway, that's that's not going to work. Assembly, easy to assemble, all parts were included, and easy to follow instructions. Again, I did not like the radio ring design. Um, having one Phillips screw that would secure that entire radio ring with those four radio with those three radios on there. I just think that's a weak spot in the design, but I'm going to give it a shot. And if, as long as it doesn't start spinning, those that radio ring doesn't come loose, that Phillips screw doesn't come loose, I'll be happy. It had a very good uh, SO239 connector, also very good high quality. The receive has very very good receive on it. Uh, now the band's been wide open, but uh, it's it's I've been making contacts Australia, Italy all over most of the stations that are beaming are beaming toward me i'm vertical but even though i'm vertical and they're horizontal in in propagation that really doesn't matter because it it doesn't care but uh, anyway had a lot of good contacts transmit is great swrs on 10 meter uh, very very good signal reports uh, from other stations s7 s9 of course they're beaming toward me but that's okay uh, overall, you know, not too bad. So I was hoping the antenna would work for both 6 and 10 meter, but it looks like an external antenna tuner will be needed. The overall quality of the antenna was good. The antenna is about 6 pounds. It's definitely heavier. You know, 
Kind of if I had to do over again, I probably would not have purchased this antenna and focused on the dipole. But you know what? Uh, actually, when I ordered this thing, I called DX Engineering and asked him if I could return it. And it had already shipped, so that was that. So I said, you know what? I'll just give it a try. So anyway, just uh, part of the learning curve of a, of a ham operator. So anyway, antennas are antennas. So this this scope here did not work out. So what I ended up doing is now I've got a uh, diamond here for 10 meter, which works all the way across the band. And I've got my 11 meter CB. And then, of course, I've got my Comet 3. One thing I wanted to mention real quick is uh, if you guys are looking for a cheap or low cost introduction antenna for 10 meter, this little serial antenna here is actually a pretty good deal. Uh, it's what I use. It's what I started on. It's cheap. It's about 80 bucks. It's lightweight. It only weighs about two pounds. And the beauty of it is it's got good SWR. But what I wanted to show you is there's an adjustment point right here that you can adjust. And that's right up here. So if you, you can tune this for 28400. Uh, now there is a GP2758 wave which has ground radials. And then there's also a GPS27 half wave which has no radials. And this is the one that I have. But for about 80 bucks, it's not a bad little antenna. And it'll get you on 10 meters real quick. And uh, it, it's a good antenna, so I just thought I'd pass that along to you, you know, for whatever that was worth. Overall, I'd give it about a 3 out of 5. I kind of was hoping if, if I can get the 6 meter to work, if, if, it, if I can figure out a way to do it, I may have to get the antenna tuner. But um, it would be nice. It would be nice because this was a pretty expensive antenna. So just hopefully, you know, if I could get the 6 meter to work at some point, we'll, you know, we'll figure it out. So... Anyway, that's all the video. I just want to kind of go over, um, you know, the installation of this this uh, CP6 antenna. That's what it looks like there. It's uh, like I said, it's it's pretty pretty large antenna. There it is, right there. You can see my GP3. So anyway, that's the plan. That's what happened. That's what's been going on. So uh, anyway, I'll put up some videos later with some signal reports on it. But uh, Anyway, that's uh, that's the video. So uh, 73 from KI5JUF, and uh, again, this is just something I thought I'd share with you guys. Don't know how useful it'll be, but uh, hey, you know what? Every project, uh, if you know, if you can document it, learn something from it, or share any information, what what uh, that that that's a good thing. So, all right, well, 73 from KI5JUF, and again, thanks for watching.